Hey, this is a couple of bunkies, and we are doing something a little different today. We are uh, troubleshooting a 1.5 horsepower DC3 portable uh, dust collector motor, uh, and uh, it is from Penn State Industries. Okay, so a, a good friend of mine, uh, Fred and Helen Mallory, had uh, given us a, uh, a dust collector that was in their shop, and uh, it no longer works. Uh, and I had asked him politely if we could go ahead and uh, have it for our own shop and see if we can figure out how to tr troubleshoot and get it working again. Okay, so this is what it does as of right now. You go ahead and put it in, you flip the switch, and it hums. Now, uh, I've worked on some electric motors in the past, uh, and this one has a capacitor on it. So that's what I initially kind of think what the uh, issue might be. But we will go ahead and take a look. First, we're going to go ahead and make sure the switch is uh, working properly. Of course, we unplug the power. Um, actually, let's first, before anything else, uh, make sure that the rotor rotates freely. Okay, uh, go ahead and see if you can get a shot right in here. Okay, so, see the rotor, uh, it's rotating freely and it's not jammed or anything like that. I'd say that's a pretty good one. So, now I'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, switch. Okay, so there's a couple ways that you can test this. You could just check the voltage right away, or you can go ahead and just check the resistance, which I'm going to go for the resistance. So the two power uh, ones are the black and the red coming in from the cord here. And then the green is attached to the uh, the housing of the uh, the pump right here. This uh, little green one right here. So then we have the black and the red. Should this should not have any power going to it as of right now? Yes, dear. There we go. So I go ahead and turn the switch on. Now we're getting a reading between those two. Now we're going to get a reading between those two. And with the switch off, we shouldn't get a reading between those two areas. So that's telling me that the switch uh, is okay. And this here, go ahead and just make sure that all of these are nice and tight and none of, nothing is loose. And we should have a good switch all electrically on this side. So this tells me that I might have a bad capacitor, which is actually a fairly, it's not as common, but we will go ahead and take a look and see what happens here. My cat is just going crazy over here. He's telling me, no, it's not the capacitor, it's something else. That's what the kitty is saying. Now then, Bunky Cat here to tell you about a possum store over on Etsy. Now amazing products for sale. Okay, so we're going to flip it sideways. Now that we have the capacitor on this, if people don't really know, but uh, some motors require a little bit more amperage or power, more power in order to start. 
and this is exactly what this uh, this does. It gives the motor just a little bit more power just to, uh, for the initial start. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is uh, 200 MFD, uh, 125 watt. It doesn't appear to be puffed out or anything like that. And one way to tell if it is kind of working is if you go ahead and discharge the capacitor. And of course you didn't see a spark or anything in there. So I'm thinking that for some reason this capacitor did not get any electrical charge, which I'm going to go ahead and test this capacitor real quick. Now I don't have the fancy. Okay, so just to let you guys know, uh, we went ahead and tested the capacitor with a DC battery and uh, you could barely tell a spark, uh, which is about right with a DC battery. Um, this is not exactly the recommended way to do it, uh, but uh, this is how I decided to do it. Okay, so I am saying, I would say that there is, there is nothing wrong with this capacitor. And uh, another way we can kind of find out. So I plugged in the motor to test the power going to the capacitor. And we're going to go ahead and check voltage going to it. Turn on the switch so it hums. And go ahead and check this. And we are getting almost nothing. So I don't think the capacitor is getting charged. So there could be wires, the yellow and white wire in the inside, that could be um, bad or maybe something else. Let me go ahead and put this back together here. Unplug it first because we're all about safety. Nobody wants to see me electrocute themselves, I'm sure. Go ahead. I go ahead and take this shroud cover off and see why the capacitor is not getting charged. Okay. So this is a centripetal switch, a mechanical switch, and if you see, it is not hitting the right spot on there. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit closer here on how... So this piece right here, it's normally in the down position when starting, and when it comes up, it's in the up position. Now that piece pushes in on this piece right here when it's in the start position. And this right here is the yellow and the white wire coming off of this. The white wire is on this side and the yellow wire is on this side. And that, uh, that, those stuff come to the capacitor right here on the side. So this is what's causing the capacitor not to charge somehow uh, during the, the uh, long use of this, it somehow uh, backed off and is not pressing down on this piece right here. So that's what I'm thinking is 100% the, the issue with this. So all I need to do in order to fix this should be to press down a little bit on that so it has a little bit of, uh, it uh, has that, that switch depressed and then the on position. Try to find the flat of this, there it is. So hopefully that's not gonna back out again. Maybe I'll put some anti-seize on it later. But. Now that is in the on position, and when it speeds up, it'll switch in the off position. Let's go ahead and give a quick little test, just to see if I'm right right now. Hopefully nothing flies out. There it is! That switch should go back in the down position and depress that switch so it charges the capacitor. Let's go ahead and see if it turns back on now. Okay. I think we've got a working, uh, working uh, dust collector now. All we need is the bag 
and that should be about it and we will have a nice little thing. Let me go ahead and put this thing back together and then do a couple more tries. Let's see where the Okay, so let me go ahead and turn it on, make sure it doesn't uh, make any grinding noises or anything that I don't like. Go ahead and turn this on. tune into the future video where we create a cart for this dust collector. This is a couple of bunkies and the links to our social media pages are in the show notes.